Hello, everybody. Dan DeFederici's Saratoga Report. I'm here with somebody you've never seen on this uh, on Saratoga Report before. Uh, Alex Scheidelman is the general manager of Pinnacle Roofing, and this is not just a uh, this is not a sales pitch here. Uh, he's got some important things to tell you on uh, hiring contractors, uh, not just roofers, but really any sort of contractors. And uh, I'll just briefly lead into it. Uh, the cheapest is absolutely not the best. You you have to vet your contractors. You have to make sure that they're not a fly-by-night company, someone that won't return your call, somebody that will disappear off the planet on you. And um, Alex, you you kind of prepared a, a top five list here of uh, uh, things that a, a prospective customer should do when hiring a contractor. Do you want to go into that and, and, and tell people uh, what they are here? Yes, absolutely. It, um, to your point, it is very important. Um to play, pay close attention to who you're hiring. Again, obviously I work in the roofing industry, but to your point, any industry um, where someone's gonna be working in the home services, working on your home, um, you know, it's very important to do your due diligence and do your research to make sure that that, cust or that contractor is the right fit for, for you and your project. Um, so yeah, I'll jump right into what I recommend uh, when you reached out, I, you know, didn't take me long to um, think of a few things that, that I discuss on a fairly regular basis with, with my current customer base um, for things to look out for, things to pay attention for. So number one, one thing you already kind of mentioned um, was vetting the contractor and that can be done in a variety of ways. So number one, um, I think it's important to, you know, Google, Google is a great, uh, a great place to find information, obviously, right? So getting on Google, finding, finding contractors in your area, but not only that, getting on their websites, exploring their websites and trying to figure out and make sure that they offer the services that you are requesting. For example, in the roofing space, uh, you have shingles, you have flat roofing, you have metal roofing. Um, depending on what type you're looking for, there may be contractors that don't do one of those. They focus in another area. So again, uh, exploring the website, making sure that they, they, they take care of the project that you're looking to get done is important. Okay. Um, oh, yes. sorry. You mentioned Google. Are there others? Uh, Angie's List. I think it's now angi.com. Uh, Better Business Bureau. Are there other websites you also recommend in addition to Google? To be honest with you, it's my, I'm not saying there's not, but it's my experience that Google seems to be the big player as far as finding contractors and finding businesses, finding services. Um, again, they're, they're, we, we we're involved with Angie, Angie's List for a while. Um, you know, we still are to an extent, but uh, a majority of our effort is put into Google um, because, again, from our experience, it seems like that's where uh, a majority of people um, are looking for services. And, and, and okay, good, good. I'm sorry. Keep, keep going. Is, uh, uh, did you want to go to number two or did you have more to say? Well, on your... yeah, the only other thing I had to say was in regard to Google. Um, and, and when it comes to vetting contractors, um, you know, we've found over the last several years that, um, Google reviews are extremely important. Not, not only are they important for us as a company, um, but they are for, um, you know, our prospects looking for uh, our services because it allows them to read what our existing customer base has said about us. And a lot of times we have some very detailed um, reviews on our Google page um, that go into great depths explaining what we did, how we did it. Um, and I think it's a great testimonial for us and, you know, our, our potential customers in the future that they can read about our services and the things that we do. And it's just, it's almost the new word of mouth. It's getting on Google and that's how they hear, you know, what their neighbors are saying and people in their area are saying about us. And, and, and nothing on Google, if this company or person is, uh, you can't find anything on Google, that yeah. might be a warning sign, right? Yeah, it certainly could be. Listen, I'm not here to say that uh, there, there aren't contractors out there that don't have websites and aren't on Google that aren't good guys that don't do good work. Um, but it makes the, the vetting process a little more challenging, in my opinion, um, which which that's a that's a great segue into the next part, which gets into more a little bit of a vetting process after you after you pick or select a contractor there's there's things to pay attention to um when you know you actually make the phone call and meet these folks in person um so i will jump into number two um you know when you when you decide to make that you know you decide you have a, a list of two three four contractors that you're going to reach out to there's some things that i think are important to pay attention to um number one and again i didn't have these in any any specific order but they all kind of jive together. So 
number two is again i wrote especially in the roofing industry not not just the roofing industry but specifically the roofing roofing industry um it's important to make sure that the, obviously your contractor is insured um and not only that but figure out um or ask how much are they insured for to make sure that their their coverage will um protect you in the event that you have an issue during during the project. Um, and again, most contractors are going to hold the proper insurances, not all, but most will. But more importantly, on top of the insurance, again, because most should have insurance, would be their safety program. So we at Pinnacle Roofing have a very, we, we hold our, our crews to a very strict guideline of a safety program. So um, for example, all of our guys at all times while on a roof are roped and harnessed um, and tied off to a D-ring at the ridge. And I know from my experience uh, in this industry and driving around and, and seeing other contractors at work that uh, there are unfortunately not a lot that, that hold themselves to that standard um, as far as it, as it relates to safety. I, I've seen it in my very neighborhood, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we take it, we take it seriously. Um, you know, listen, roofing is, uh, certainly a dangerous, a dangerous industry. It can be, I should say it can be a dangerous industry if you don't take the proper precautions. Um, another example of us and what we do, you know, when our guys are on the ground, the cleanup crew on the ground, they're always wearing hard hats, um, wearing high vis so that people on the roof can see them more easily. Um, so, just again, you don't necessarily have to interrogate these contractors, but just kind of get a grasp for what they do to keep themselves safe while they're on your property, especially a roof. I've got a question on that topic. Absolutely. Uh, you talk about insurance. Yeah. Um, I had a previous life as a New York State trooper, and you know, people to everyone will tell you they have insurance, but we wanted to see proof, the insurance card. Uh, do, do people ask you, hey, I want to see your policy or proof that you're you're current and you have the standards that you talk just talked yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a fantastic question. Yeah. So this and this this is a, that's a number one. It's a great question. And two, it's going to kind of lead me into one of my next tips. Um, so, yes, we actually put that in a folder. Every customer that we meet with gets a folder that talks about the materials that are going to be used talk a little bit about us. There's a lot of information about us in there, but that also includes a copy of our certi or insurance certificate. So we volunteer that right up front that we show, look, here we're insured. Here's how much for. Um, and we give that, give that to every customer um, before we even, you know, sell, sell a roof. They, they all get that information. That, that's great. And just continuing on my time as a state trooper, uh, we do sometimes get complaints to investigate. And there were horror stories of times that, you know, by and large, most contractors are reputable and, reputable and decent. But there are some scammers out there, right? Of There's people that don't show up in the beginning. They leave halfway through. And as a, as a trooper in the field, you'd have to balance. Is this a civil case? Sometimes it was so egregious, it really did delve into the criminal area. And uh, the people were always bedazzled by a low price. They Once they saw that low price, they, they didn't do any more vetting and anything. And that was a bad idea. Low price is obviously good. If, if the rest of the vetting process that you're describing here uh, hold, holds true, but oftentimes yeah. it won't, right? It doesn't. No. Um, you know, I, I explain this to our customers often to your point, um, you know, whether, whether you're buying a car, a television, a refrigerator, or hiring a contractor for your house, it is my, I believe wholeheartedly that um, you get what you pay for, no matter what you're purchasing and hiring a contractor is no different. Um, you know, there's a reason that, the lowest con the lowest price is the lowest price. It's either um, the lack of experience, lack of workmanship, or they're lacking in materials or quality of materials. They're leaving something out. There's there's a reason. You don't you cannot get um, the the best end result for the cheapest price in just about any industry or any area. Um, and that's that's also a great point. And, and that's so important with a roof, right? If you go cheap on the landscaping, well. Big deal. It doesn't look as nice, right? Yeah. But, but the roof, uh, when that ice is building up and things like that, you're, you want to know you hired a really good contractor. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And not only that, you want to make sure that your property is protected. You want to make sure that um, they have, again, safety, but also protection guidelines in place to keep your pools, your gardens, your your vehicles, everything, you know, safe and protected. Those are also, you know, important topics. Great. Um, so with that said, you're asking a lot of great questions that, you know, go right in line with what we're talking about here. So number three is, um, you know, 
again, it almost ties into the vetting, but where you reach out to somebody, you're talking to them about insurance, you're talking to them about safety. And again, it doesn't have to be in any particular order. You can ask about the safety later on down the line. But um, the next thing would be, um, what to expect. So one thing that we do, we, we, we try to have a very detailed process from the moment that a customer reaches out to our office to the time our quality manager goes out and just in, inspects the final results of a project. Um, so our estimators all set very clear expectations when we set an appointment with a customer of what, what, what's going to happen when we get out there. Um, and, and again, this almost ties into the next topic as well. So, um, Again, detail, 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 right? So when we go out, we want to make sure that uh, our, our estimators are always getting on the roof. They're inspecting the shingles, the ridge vents, how many layers of shingles are on the roof. Um, they're inspecting flashings. They're inspecting chimney flashings, pipe boots. Um, and not only that, again, we're taking uh, hundreds of photos of the exterior of the home. To my point a, a few minutes ago, um, making sure that we bring the right materials to protect the home, tarps, teepees over AC units, things like that. So we're, we're, we're doing a thorough investigation of this entire property, not just the roof, when we get there to make sure that, you know, if we do in fact move forward with the project, that we are very, very prepared, which leads me to the next point of getting into the attic, right? So we always ask people, look, we'd like to get in your attic. We'd like to inspect your insulation, your ventilation, your plywood. In the event that you have plywood or roof boards, what do you have so that God forbid we find damage during the project. We know what to bring with us so that we're prepared. We're not having to leave and run around and find materials. Um, so again, that's all part of the initial inspection. And I think that's extremely important to mention because I, I this day and age with technology advancing the way that it is, we have uh, the ability to order sky measurements or eagle views, which are satellite images of homes that give us a, pretty much a full takeoff of how many square feet the roof is, how many lineal feet of eave and ridge vent and all this and that. That gives you a full takeoff. And I've actually heard of contractors bidding jobs without ever stepping foot on the property. Yeah. Um and that's scary to me um, that anyone would go with a contractor by doing that, because, again, you don't know, is there rot? Is there more than one layer of roofing? Um, and at which point you're going to get hit with additional fees. A, a customer would. Um, so, again, it's all in the details. And again, we try to perform uh, from the moment a customer reaches out. To when we get out there to do an inspection, to the time we have our production handoff to our production team, to the time our quality managers inspect our work, um, it's all about detail. And and I think it's important. Again, that's part of the vetting process. What does your inspection process look like? Are you going to come out? Those are questions that I would suggest a homeowner asks or finds out about um, that would help vet them to see how detailed they're going to be. You know, when when I saw that on your list, I didn't quite understand the importance or the the depth or breadth of what you just described. And then when you said to me from, from the attic to, to covering the things on the outside, that being a layman in, in this world, it didn't occur to me. Now that yeah. makes perfect sense. Good, good. I'm glad. So yeah, it's, and that's, that's what we're here for today is to try to educate and try to think of, bring up things that not everyone thinks about on a day-to-day -day basis. Most people do a roof once in their lifetime. Um, so these aren't things that necessarily thinking about, but. but um, let me ask you a good quality roof. Uh, I know it's not an exact science, but, but how long can someone expect that to last? That's a great question. A great question, but a moving target. Uh, you know, the answer varies, right? So you can, again, I mentioned in the beginning, different roofing materials, shingles, rubber, metal. Uh, we, we install composite shingles um, that are basically plastic that, you know, will last a long, long time. Um, but uh, I'd say... 80 to 80 percent of our business is shingles asphalt shingles um we use um several brands we're affiliated with that we you know we go through training with um you know typically they're lasting between 30 30 35 years it depends on a lot of factors they call them a 50-year shingle uh, or a limited lifetime shingle but the reality is those warranties um are based on product uh, manufacturer issues, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that the product is going to last 50 years. It means that that particular manufacturer is warranting that product um, against manufacturer defects for that period of time. So it's a little bit misleading. And I get that question literally every single day. They assume I'm, I'm getting a 50 year shingle is going to last 50 years. Not necessarily the case. Um, but again, 
the right steps are taken, they do their investigation, they replace flashing that needs to be replaced, they replace pipe boots that need to be replaced, they do the things that they should do um, for our 50 year shingle, you know, I think it's realistic to get 30 to 40 years out of it. Um, again, given that uh, all those proper steps are taken. Okay, great. Uh, being that I'm 57 years old and I will need a roof in the next year or two, it, you know, I'll be 90 before it's my problem again. And there you go. Yeah. Tells me I'll, I'll have bigger problems at that point. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm still around. <laughs> well, give us a call. We'll uh, we'll take care of you. Um, so the next thing is um, after you had have a customer, I'm sorry, a contractor out. Uh, they do the investigation. They, they do the inspection. They're in your attic. They're doing what they do. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to keep you know saying this word, detail, detail, detail. Um, are they volunteering the information describing not only the scope of work that they're going to protect your plants, they're going to protect your driveway, they're going to protect um, your landscaping or whatever the pool area, whatever the case may be. But more importantly, are they describing in detail what materials are going to be used? So what we find a lot is, is that I've seen it hundreds of times where you'll, I'll see a contract from a, from a, you know, competitive roofer and it'll say, you know, by code, you need six feet of what's called ice and water shield going up the eaves where the gutters would be. That's code um, to make sure you don't have ice back up, but they'll say six feet of ice and water shield and new underlayment and a new ridge vent. Um, but they don't use, they don't tell you what, what kind you're getting. And even within some of the top brands um, in the industry, they offer five, six different products in each category, five, six different shingles, five or six different ice and waters, five or six different ridge vents, all of which vary greatly in cost and, and quality. So it's important to make sure that um, they're describing again in detail what you're getting, where it's going on your roof. Do you have vulnerable areas? And should you have additional material there? Um, that should all be gone through in great detail. And again, we, we do that uh, and we practice what we preach and we have a very detailed proposal, but we actually do a site drawing uh, with the, the satellite images that we use that depict everything, where we need site protection, where we need extra ice and water shield, where we're going to put um, the ridge vents and where we're not, so on and so forth. So again, very transparent process to make sure there are no questions, um, you know, up in the air for the customer when they sign a contract. You know, you, um, you, you, you had me, you had me thinking there, um, you shouldn't, and you touched on this in your notes to me, as well as what you just said here, you shouldn't have to draw this out of a, of a roofing contractor, right? They should be offering offer, a professional roofing contractor knows their stuff and will be offering this to you as a standard package before you do anything. Correct. That's my opinion. Yes, absolutely. That information should be, you shouldn't, and to your point, you shouldn't have to ask for this information. It should be volunteered. They should be giving you this information. And, um, you know, listen, we've had a lot of success over the years by just doing that, being open, being transparent, being honest. And it sounds silly, but, you know, as you said, there's some good contractors and there's some that aren't as good, right? And um, we've had great success and uh, a lot of repeat customers based on our interaction, based on our ability to communicate and um, describe these topics and go into detail for them so that they're comfortable and they know they're making an informed decision. That's ultimately what we try to do. We want our customers to make an educated decision. And that's kind of how we look at our process. We we educate first. That's what we try to do. And you know, even if a customer decides not to go with us, we just want to make sure they have all the information possible to make an informed decision, whether it's with us or somebody else. You know, and I've got another question, and this is going long, but this is important stuff uh, that if you're going to spend that much money on a roof or a contract or something else, I think this is a valuable uh, educational session here. Um, uh, last summer, I had somebody knock on my door. Hey, we're doing a roof down the street. We're going to give you a free. Uh, we'll, we'll come here and go up on your roof and give you a free report. Is, is that is that a um, is that a typical thing in the industry? Is that an accepted thing in the industry? That's or should I be concerned when that happens? That's a great question. So we're actually in the process of of beginning something similar to that. And the reason is, is because, um, uh, you know, I guess there, there's there's several ways you can look at that. I believe there's value in that to not only um, a contractor, but also a customer, because what we find, especially in Saratoga County, you have buildings, or I'm sorry, neighborhoods rather, where the, almost the entire neighborhood was built around the same time, right? So they're getting to be 20 to 30 years old. Um, and 
you know, generally the roof is going to be all the roofs in that neighborhood are going to begin to need to be done around the same time. And I, I think that there's value in, you know, again, educating neighbors in, in an area where, you know, roofs are of a certain age, you get on a neighbor's roof and you see certain issues, nail pops, granule loss, staining, deterioration. You can't necessarily see that from the ground. You just can't. So it's again, getting on the roof is very important. So I do believe there's value in, in, in attempting to at least educate a customer or neighbor of, of an existing customer that, look, we're over here. This is what we're finding. We know this neighborhood was built in the same time frame. Um, if you want to, great. If you don't, here's our number. Give us a call when you're ready. We'd be happy to give you a, you know, a consultation and, um, again, try to inform you a little bit about what's going on. If you're good, you're good. But if you need a roof, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, explain that to you as well. Great. I, I keep, you're, you're doing well staying on task here. I keep knocking you off with my questions and you, you keep getting back to it. Um, uh, this is great. Um, you want to go, go back? I, I think you're just about done with your, your, your topic. Yeah. Yeah. Basically to be honest with you, I'll open my notes here. Um, number five pretty much ties all of them together. Um, and, and that is paying attention. I've mentioned the word detail a lot, but, um, paying attention to the details. And I believe wholeheartedly again, that, um, the, the amount of detail that you're given um, from early stages is going to set the stage for what to expect long term when when dealing with a contractor. If they're open and upfront and they answer their phone right away and they show up when they say they're going to show up, that's a pretty good indication that by the time your project's ready to go through production, no matter what industry, again, that you're going to see that same follow through. Um, so again, pay attention to those details. Make sure you're asking the right questions, especially the ones we discussed, and make sure they're volunteering that information, again, timely, and they're responding to you in a timely manner. And uh, if you do all those things and they, they, they check all those boxes, uh, my opinion is you should have a successful experience. And, and, and you're right. And it's, it's obvious, but I, I got to say it. The flip side of that is, and you use the word responsiveness in the notes, is if they're not getting back to you before you even paid anything and you can't get a hold of them and you're getting voicemails, that's a big red flag, right? Right off the bat. Right off the bat. That's uh, again, am I, am I saying that, listen, no one's perfect. People miss calls. People forget to call people back, but you know, it's pretty obvious when it's, when it's a habit or when it's a, um, a constant, right. Uh, you reach out several times and they're still not calling you back. Yeah. That's a red flag for sure. And you know, again, 90% of the time that's going to follow through, you know, if, if you, in fact, you, you know, decide to go with that contract. Right. Well, Alex, bring it on home for us. If someone knows they need a new roof or they they suspect they may need a new roof, uh, what is the best way for them to uh, to contact uh, Pinnacle Roofing? Again, as I mentioned in the uh, in in the beginning, Google. Go on Google, read about us, get on our website. You can email us. Our, our phone number's there. Um, you reach out to us anytime. But Google's definitely the way to find us and uh, the most prominent way for people to to reach out. And, and it's a, a, a pin roof, P-I-N-N-R-O-O-F. I got it up on the screen, dot com, correct? That's correct. Okay, good. Excellent. Alex, this was really, really helpful. I've been doing this website for uh, Saratoga Report for almost three and a half years, and I've never done had anything like this on there. I've had some educational things, but not um, certainly not in the contracting world. So uh, this was really kind of kind of neat, informative, and I, I, I believe the, um, my viewers and readers are, are going to think the same. Well, good. I appreciate, I truly appreciate you having me on. And, uh, you know, again, if we can help one or two people out reach, reading this or watching this, then uh, I look at it as a, as a success. So i um, happy to do it. And I'm really appreciate you having me on. Excellent, Alex. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely.